Hi, this is Kim here and today what I want to do is share a number of tips for getting through depression. So I've had a lot of personal experience of going through depression. I was first diagnosed with clinical depression and ended up in hospital when I was 28 and went through quite a hard time for some time. Had other illnesses develop after that and healed myself from those. I talk about those in other places. And from time to time, due to circumstances, I have dipped in and out of depression. So I really know what it's like to be in it, what it feels like to be in that space, how absolutely horrible it is to be in that space. But the really useful thing is because of all the work that I've done on myself and all the trainings that I've done and all the implementation of the strategies that I've learned, I have some really concrete tools which really work. And they're really simple, but often if we either don't know these tools and strategies or when we're deep in the bowels of depression, when our mind is really not working, um, you know, normally, often we, we don't think of these tools and strategies. And it may be, as I said, because we've never heard of them, and it may be just because we can't access, access them in that moment. So what I recommend is that, A, you give some of these strategies a try, but also make a list of them so that you have them to refer to when you're in that space. Because when you're not in depression, and I call this being above the line or below the line, when you're below the line, you're in the depression, and when you're above the line, you're out of it. When you're out of it, you tend to forget how bad it was. It's just like if you get over the flu, you forget, you know, two days later, you've forgotten how sick you were feeling two days before. And this is totally natural because we're only meant to notice when we have symptoms so that we can do something about it to, to get rid of them. Otherwise, our natural state is to be healthy and to be happy. So it's totally normal to forget what it's like to not feel good. But the problem is we need tools and strategies to have that we can use that are practical and tangible and effective when we're in those places where we need help. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to go over 20 or so uh, strategies for self-helping oneself out of or through depression. If you're in my Stop Depression Now program, which is all about self-help strategies for stopping depression without medication or supplements, then you'll get the full list of strategies. And then I will also put a version of this with the first 10 strategies up publicly on YouTube, social media, etc. So I'm going to start with self-help strategy number one. And there's no particular order to this, but they're, they're all important. So number one, one day at a time, right? We just need to be one day at a time because when we're deep in the bowels of depression, in our mind, we're looking into the future and we're seeing depression. We're seeing no light at the end of the tunnel. We're seeing things even worse than they are now and they may be pretty bad right now. And that is not useful thinking. So what we need to do is we need to stay in the now one day at a time. And sometimes it might even be one hour at a time. Yeah, it might be, how am I going to get through the next hour? And sometimes it might be, how am I going to get through the next five minutes? Okay. And you will know what that means for you as I say that, depending on what your experience of depression is and, and what your symptoms are. So give yourself a break and bring it back to the now. Stop projecting out negatively into worst case scenario outcomes in the future. Stay in the now one day at a time. And just notice what difference that makes within you because it takes a lot of pressure off. And that is connected to number two, 
which is staying in the present moment. So when I'm going through really challenging times, I have a little mantra that I use, and this is part of it. I refuse to go into the past. I refuse to go into the future. I choose to be in the present. I am safe in the now. And you can write that out. And what I recommend you do is you write it out and you read it every day, several times a day, if necessary. And when you're reading it, notice how the words make you feel. Because when we come into the present moment, we feel safe. So when we're in the present moment, we're not in the past, we're not in the future, we're in the now. And that's why there is a saying, uh, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, today is a gift, which is why it's called the present. So mine is just a slightly different version. It's like it's how I like to say it as a as a mantra, if you like. And I find it very, very soothing and calming. It really helps to calm the stress and the fear. So I'll just say it again. I refuse to go into the past. I refuse to go into the future. I choose to be in the present. I'm safe in the now. And as you repeat that over and over again, it's not just about saying the words, it's about noticing how does that make me feel. And in particular, it should bring some ease into the chest area, the heart area, maybe even the gut area, which is what needs to happen. We need to calm our nervous system, our digestive system, our internal organs, and bring ourselves into the present. So try that out. The third thing is small gratitudes. Being grateful. So what you can do every day, if, even if you're just in this hell place in your mind, and by the way, depression is all in the mind. It is a mind thing. It, it may seem like it's the external circumstances, and the external circumstances may well be contributing to how we're feeling and what we're thinking, they may be the external trigger, but the depression itself and the feelings of depression, and as I've spoken about in other videos, depression is often depressing emotions. The feeling of depression is all internal. It, it's a hell that we make in our own mind. So we can either have heaven inside of us or we can have hell inside of us. And everything is driven internally. So one thing that we can do, even in our worst moments and our worst days, is to look around, look around our environment and be grateful for anything and everything. So it could be the roof over your head, the fact that you have a fridge, you have food in the fridge, hopefully, you have a car, you have friends, you have family, you have a body, you're alive. You find the things to be grateful for. But again, when we cultivate gratitude, that shifts something internally at a chemistry or chemical level. And depression is chemical, right? It, it is a, a set of chemicals that get switched on or off inside our brain chemist chemistry, inside our nervous system, inside our whole body, inside the internal organs. We are a chemical factory. And when we're feeling depressed, there are so many things that are interconnected. It's our thinking, our thoughts, our beliefs, our feelings, and our body chemistry. So just try that. Try daily gratitude. Being thankful for whatever you can find to be thankful for. And notice how that makes you feel again in your chest area because the heart is really important here not just as a physical organ but energetically um, our heart is to do with love joy happiness gratitude many other positive virtues and when we practice gratitude 
it shifts something energetically, which means it all it shifts something at a chemistry level in our heart. And our heart is a brain of its own. We have three brains in our body. I talk about that on other videos. You can Google them on YouTube. We have three brains, head, heart, gut. And when we change our cellular chemistry in our brain, that is going to have an impact on our whole system. So gratitude is really, really important. There's a lot more I could say about each of these, but I just want to go over them um, briefly you know and, and, and introduce these these tips in this video so the fourth one very important we need to be gentle on ourselves and cultivate self-compassion and self-love and self-kindness and all these good feelings towards ourselves so often what can happen without us even realizing it and I've been a master of this is that we can be very hard on ourselves and beat ourselves up and put ourselves down and expect a lot of ourselves and be very demanding on ourselves and basically that's like hitting ourselves with a stick and usually that sort of pattern of behavior comes as a result of being very hard on ourselves our whole life and usually that pattern was set up early in childhood as a result of not feeling good enough maybe we were treated like that by other people there are all sorts of reasons why we develop a pattern of being hard on ourselves but what we have to do is we have to cultivate self-love and self-compassion and we have to give ourselves as much love as we would like to give other people or as much love as we would like to receive from other people so it's quite good for this to imagine that you're a six-year-old girl or boy and how would you treat a six-year-old who was really upset or going through a really difficult time? Well, hopefully you would be very loving and nurturing to that six-year-old and that is what we need to do for ourselves. We have to be gentle on ourselves because when we're really hard on ourselves, that puts a lot of pressure and expectation on our mind, on our body and it just creates more stress and tension and it hinders the healing process so be gentle on yourself be kind to yourself the fifth uh, strategy is to accept what is now that doesn't mean we don't want to change what is but the first step in transformation of anything is to accept where we are at it's so important and it is profoundly healing and transformational. Now what most people do with emotions and with depression and anxiety and illness is that obviously they don't want it because it feels really uncomfortable and they try and get rid of it as quickly as they can. And of course, yes, we do want to let it go, but when we try and push things away, what we're doing is we're resisting reality and we're resisting what is and it doesn't work it just creates more tension so what I recommend is that first of all you accept what is and what I mean by that is you fully acknowledge and accept okay I'm depressed I'm experiencing depression right now in this moment this is how it is because nothing changes until we first accept and acknowledge it what happens when we accept and acknowledge without judgment without any expectation of things changing is that there is a, a relief a sense of relief that happens inside the body it's like a de-stressing and that is a cellular chemical chemistry change there's already a shift just through that acceptance without judgment so we could say that is unconditional non-judgment unconditional acceptance unconditional love and this is what we have to learn to cultivate as human beings it's what the Dalai Lama talks about all the time spiritual teachers talk about it all the time we have to cultivate unconditional love unconditional compassion unconditional acceptance for ourselves and others 
and everything in the world. So everything starts with ourself and if we first of all accept where we are then we can take the next step, steps to taking the next step and dealing with the situation. Number six is hang in there. Don't give up hope. Hang in there. If possible, find people to talk to who can say that to you. It is so powerful to, when you're in the depths of depression to hear those words from someone else. It is sometimes very, very difficult to say it to ourselves. And when somebody else says it to us, you know, hang in there, you'll come through this, don't give up, etc., etc., it's very healing that there's a part of us, and really it's the heart again, that hears those words and it's like sparking the flame of hope. You know, the flame might almost be out and it's like blowing on that flame so that it becomes a little bit brighter and we have more strength and courage and resilience to keep going because it can be very, very hard in those depths of depression. So remember to hang in there. And you can even write yourself some notes around the place because it goes into the subconscious. When we put notes around on the mirror or on the cupboard or wherever, even if we think we're not reading those notes, we're actually our subconscious is reading them. So you can just put notes around the place saying, hang in there, don't give up. Or, or try not to put things in the negative, just try and put them more in the positive. But remember to hang in there. Another thing that I found very, very useful, if I was feeling like I really couldn't manage to do much on a daily basis, just having a few key tasks or projects really helps because we always need something to look forward to. We, we need something to do. We need to be using our creativity. Even if it's just something really, really small, and I'm talking, for example, like, okay, I'm going to read a page of a book, or I'm going to watch a movie, or I'm going to cook a very small meal, or I'm going to go for a walk, or I'm going to phone a friend, whatever that task or that project is, when you get up in the morning, and you're thinking, you're in the depths of depression, and you're thinking, oh my god, I've just woken up into a nightmare, and I, all I want to do is crawl back into bed and just go to sleep, and knock myself unconscious from this horrible pain, write a list of the things that you do feel you could accomplish that day. Write it down and do it. And, and, they, and it shouldn't be really hard things, right? It should be things that you actually want to do that you will feel would bring you some enjoyment. And do them. Just do them. Because but as you go through that list, you're going to experience a sense of achievement on a certain level, which is really healthy. And every day you build on that list. Every day you might add a little bit, just a teeny bit more. And within just a week or two, you can be amazed at the difference in what your list was two weeks ago and how much more you're accomplishing. Number eight is, if possible try and eat well. What we eat does affect our body chemistry. Um, so, you know, for example, sugar is not good for brain chemistry. It's not good for the gut. Gluten is not good. Fizzy drinks, coffee. You know what health, what is healthy and what isn't. And there will be a difference in how we feel if we can eat healthier. So do your best to eat healthy, eat vegetables, stop the junk stuff, drink lots of fresh water, pure water, and that will help. And just find out, you know, work out what, what are the foods that nourish me, because it's all about nourishing and nurturing ourselves. If we're depressed, there's of, often a lack of nourishment and nurturing in our life which is why we've become depressed in the first place so even though it's important to have nourishment and nurturing from other people 
Sometimes we can't always get that. Sometimes we're not in a situation or an environment where we're going to get it from the outside. So we have to nourish and nurture ourselves. And ultimately, that is part of the lesson. And with that, number nine is exercising and walking. It doesn't have to be vigorous exercise. In fact, when we're deeply depressed, it might be better not to do vigorous exercise. But just a gentle walk, very importantly, getting fresh air, getting sunshine, maybe qigong, meditation, yoga, these types of exercises are the best, tai chi, it will definitely help. Even if it feels really, really difficult and you have to use 200% of your willpower to actually do those exercises, you will feel better afterwards. So if you can, try and do that. And number 10 is breathing, breathing well. Of course we're always breathing, otherwise we wouldn't be alive. But if we do deep abdominal breathing, then that is really gonna help because we're gonna oxygenate our cells a lot more. And actually a lot of unhappiness can come from not breathing properly. I'm not saying that's the only reason for happiness, unhappiness, but our cells need oxygen and most people are shallow chest breathers and, and actually they're only breathing in the top half of their lungs and it's the bottom half of the lungs which have the most capacity and in order to breathe fully into our lungs we need to actually do whole body breathing which means we breathe into our belly we breathe we breathe, uh, we sort of expand our belly 360 degrees forwards, backwards, sideways and it's easiest to do this when we're lying down. Um, to, I'm not going to go into the details here. I have other videos. I, I talk about this in my online courses, how to breathe properly. But breathing properly can make a significant difference in how we're feeling. So deep breathing is really, really important.